Joining me now is Horace Cooper, co-chair of Project 21, former counsel to then House Majority Leader Dick Armey. Preston Mitchum is the division chair for the Washington Bar Association, Young Lawyers Division, and Charlie Kirk is the founder of Turning Point USA, now author of the book, Campus Battlefield. He met with Kanye for hours earlier today. Uh, great to have you all on tonight. It was a very interesting day in Washington for a lot of reasons. And Preston, I want to start with you. You listen to the angle. Do you think that any of this overwrought reaction to Kanye West is because the left is worried that if this, let's say it's even 20% support for Trump, that's cataclysmically bad news for Democrats. It, it absolutely would be bad news if it were accurate. Uh, one of the things that I'm, I, I certainly won't come on here and, and pretend as though Kanye West is anyone's saving grace, not for the Democrats, not for the Republicans. Kanye West acted as a child today. He ranted and raved all on the Oval Office, banging his hand as a child would when they're throwing a temper tantrum. You had to almost read hieroglyphics to even understand what he was saying. And I'm actually proud of anyone who knows the Morse code enough to know what Kanye West was saying. He grandstanded the entire time, and he pontificated on nothingness. I, as a Democrat, I'm certainly not worried about any African-American's uh, African approval rating for Trump. No there will still receive a low, uh, excuse me, President Trump will still receive a low amount of African-American supporters. Trust uh, that. I want to get to Charlie in a moment, because you actually spent a lot of time with Kanye today. Horace, I'm wondering what the reaction would be if a white person said that he or she couldn't understand what Kanye West has said today in the Oval Office. I, if, I, if I said that, I can't imagine, you know, the people would come after me. I think people ought to disagree with him, that they think black people shouldn't like Trump. But there's some, he said some actually interesting things in all. He was, like, all over the place, but he's not a political person. He's not, you know, no more than Miley Cyrus bumping and grinding or doing the twerk on whatever it was, the Grammys. She doesn't look like a complete moron. But she's out there banging doors for Hillary. Oh, Hillary's the person for you. Let me give you the five reasons why. No one, no one talked about Miley. But this is a real problem for liberals. Why isn't Miley Cyrus and Matt Damon and Ben Affleck and all the other people who showed up over all the years never heard about policy considerations then? Celebrity after celebrity has always come out and supported the left, and we all were supposed to rejoice. We were honored to have them show up and make their presentation. No one asked them, hey, wait a second, you don't have your data right. You aren't actually keeping up with what's going on. These, these points you're making aren't accurate. No one says any of those things. We sit back and we clap. When someone like Kanye West says what he says, what he really is doing is saying to black people, look around, think for yourself, you can, it's okay. And that's what's the most dangerous of all. Charlie, um, I'm going to play something from the Oval Office that we didn't play earlier. Kanye on liberal racism and get your reaction. One of the moves that I love that liberals tried to do the liberal will try to control a black person through the concept of racism because they know that we are very proud, emotional people. So when I said I like Trump to like someone that's liberal, they'll say, oh, but he's racist. You think racism can control me? Well, look, I had the opportunity to spend the afternoon with him after this meeting. And um, I, first of all, I think it's unbelievably insulting to say that you couldn't understand what he was saying. You know what he was saying. I he don't. was saying, you don't? You I know don't. what he's saying? I'm I defecting he, from he the model. Let me finish. I let you finish. Let me finish. He said, I'm defecting from the monolith, and you have permission to do the same. It took courage for him to do that, because his whole life is about selling albums. His whole life is about popularity. And so many people in Hollywood and so many people in the music industry are afraid to do what he did. And you know what? You should be quite afraid, because even if that Rasmussen poll is half correct, if, Do if Donald Trump's approval rating is 18, 19, 20 percent, the Democrat Party is done. And Kanye West, he's not even saying vote Democratic, vote Republican. He's saying, think free. Think for yourself. Think independent. And there, if you look objectively at what the Democrat Party has done to our inner cities, our urban communities, and the black community over the last 60 years, they have ravished these communities, high murder rates, crime everywhere. You saw in Chicago, you did a wonderful special there. There has not been a Republican mayor of Chicago since 1931. And yet the black community votes for Democrats at a 95 percent clip. I applaud Kanye West for his courage, for standing up. It is not easy to do what he did today. I'm not, I gotta say, I gotta say, I'm not wild about celebrities and politics. I mean, I wrote a book called Shut Up and Sing that got, you know, you know I said, I, I said, I jokingly said, LeBron James, shut up and dribble. It was a joke, but because I wrote a book called Shut Up and Sing, everyone got all upset. You can't tell Kanye to, 
Guys, everybody has an opinion, yet the moment you prick someone else, they're screaming, I'm a victim. No one's a victim. If you want to go out there and take shots at President Trump, call him this, that, or the other name, then don't be expecting someone isn't going to come back in your face. So this guy comes out, and he says, I like Trump, and it's not, I disagree with you. This is why you should think differently about Donald Trump. Donald is not good for black. Make that argument. But to say he's, uh, he's psychologically um, inept, he's, me he's a mental case, he's dumb, and the, the, the word Negro used by two black people on set I mean, again, I always say, if a conservative host of any color said anything like that, they'd be gone. And, and they they'd, fired, they'd be fired. And so why, is the, why are these other... I don't like calling for people to be fired. Or, I, I'm, that's not my thing. But the double standard is, to me, Preston, that's it, it, just not good. See, a couple things, Lars. So, one, they should be gone if they were using the word Negro, right? We, we seem to have an issue in this country where, for some reason, many white Americans believe they can use the same exact language against black people that black people can use against black people. It's just not true, and it's never been the case. And I know that's going to be hard for many people to accept. Including regardless. Me, I reject that. Oh, oh, you can reject that all you want. It doesn't make it accurate. It doesn't make your statement accurate. So black it is people absolutely. Can explain what you mean, because so, I'm confused. Yeah, so with your statement, you said if a, if a white person would essentially make a call for Kanye West calling him a Negro, they would be called for a firing. They should be called for a firing. They have no right to use that language. The, the language and the ownership and the accountability lies with black people to use that link, that particular language. I'm still talking. And on top of the fact that it seems very interesting to me that we're attempting to, like, make Kanye some some savior, some deity. I'm not. I said that. Okay, okay, okay. I didn't say okay. that. You didn't, you, you didn't verbatim say that. This is my interpretation. It seems very accurate because in the early 2000s, conservatives were not out here proud that Kanye West said that George Bush was not for black no, people. No, and I made that point yeah. the other night. So, so we're being very hypocritical in this room if we're going to sit here and pretend as though Kanye West is now a saving grace for the Republican Party. Party, no, when I, just 10 to 15 right. years I ago, certainly, you all were disparaging him for making right. similar accusations uh, I, before. I, you are right that I was doing my shut up and sing moment, and which is why I said, the reason I'm looking at this issue today is because I think people are desperate for solutions. Absolutely. All people, it doesn't matter whether you're gay, straight, black, white, it, people well, are looking for solutions to heal this country, bring this country forward. And, and Charlie, you spent a lot of time with him today. I don't know Kanye West. I don't know what kind of person he is. I like to judge people on who they are. Preston, we, we could all probably hang out, have a drink, we'd all we'd be laugh and have fun. But, but I don't know what he's like. What is he trying to do here with look, Trump? Look, first of all, he loves this country, and he sees a lot of himself in Donald Trump, someone who has defied the odds, someone who everyone said, Kanye West, you can't make your own record album. You can never succeed. He's defied the odds. But instead, you did not attack his ideas. You attacked him personally. That's right. You, both. And, well, okay, but I you, can do you both, first and you foremost, shouldn't have you first and foremost resorted saying that I have to understand Egyptian hieroglyphics to understand what he was saying. What he said today had more wisdom than anything Barack Obama said in eight years. Wow, we he said, wisdom he said, very differently. He said liberals want blacks to vote Democrat because they want them for political power. Home run. And Republicans want correct. blacks to vote he did Republican. A, he did an unbelievably intellectually, I, I would say, grounded critique in his own way against the welfare state. He also said we have the right to bear arms. And I'm going to let... Uh, uh, it, it's not about Republican or Democrat. It's seriously oh. about whether people can think freely. And it's also about, are we going to be individuals? What you just said denies that we're individuals when you claim that black people can use offensive language against other black Negro people, but whites... If Negro you is? said so that if a white say. person said it, they should be it. fired. Okay, that's the that's double standard. That's offensive. If, if the liberals then have double standards, you so, guys have no standards at all. Well, that's oh. that's been the case. So, so it's not about Republicans and Democrats. Yes, it's you not. keep saying liberals versus well, conservatives. The one thing okay. I want to get at a little bit, and and I like to keep you guys for the whole hour because this is so great. Uh, but honestly, each one of you has a really interesting point of view. In the Obama years, um, we had Snoop Dogg. In Absolutely. The, in the, he was hanging out in the White House. You know, he always likes to smoke his pot and all that. And he was laughing about it. And, you know, you can say, well, was that really presidential? You know, but Clinton had Monica in the side office over the Oval Office. Was that presidential? I mean, had Jay-Z and Beyonce mugging in the, in the situation room. We couldn't use that photo because it's licensed. Too expensive. <laughs> I didn't want to use it. But he's there mugging in the... I mean, it's... You know what I mean? So everyone has, has their celebrities in and out. Uh, Trump has one, pretty much only one or two celebrities, three celebrities. Lee Greenwood around. Like, so you have like a few, <laughs> you have a few celebrities. And you can't forget But he phone. can't even have like one celebrity, one African-American celebrity. That guy has to be destroyed. I just think, what's the big deal if Kanye West is there? Like, why are people get, you know, why are liberals so worried because about Because he's it? a threat. That's because he's an A-list artist that's, that's also right. married to an entire family with huge cultural clout.
He's a threat to the Democrat monolith. That's why you see Don Lemon trying to discredit him off He the made bat. a hit. Uh, Kanye made a hit at the Kardashians. Like, no, a, a nice, nicely <laughs> yeah, gestured kind of. Well, we didn't have a lot of male influence in that family. I was like, <laughs> okay, I'm not going near that. Uh, final thought, real quick. If we look at the Republican Party, and it's funny that we said Democrats are a monolith, because we can clearly see who's the real monolith here. We're looking at the room right now. All right. Well, it's good to have you all on. I don't know um, what that means. Uh, well, we don't have anyway. to hieroglyphics. All right. We all okay. We guys. I want to have you on for the whole hour, but they're telling me I can't do that. All right.